Okay. Oh. Okay, members. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, um, it's um, it's five five thirty now. Um, welcome to the meeting of the Policy and Resources Scrutiny Committee held on the twelfth of January two thousand and twenty one. Can I welcome all members and wish them all a very happy new year and I hope 2021 starts and ends better than 2020 did. Um, OK, so I'm just going to read the following privacy statement now. This meeting will be recorded and made available to view via the Council's website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images and audio of those individuals speaking will be publicly available to all via the recording on the council website at www.cafili.gov.uk. OK, we'll go to the agenda and the first item on the agenda is to receive apologies for absence. Um, I've got apologies from Christine, Councillor Christine Forehead and Councillor Elaine Forehead. Um, is there any, does anybody know of anybody else who's apolo apologised? No? OK, that's that's great. Um, could could I could I just do a, a roll call of members? Would that would that would that be okay? I think that just to make sure everybody's here. Um, would somebody in committee services be okay to to call the names, please? Yes, I can do that for you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Mark. Okay, so Councillor Adams, present. Councillor Aldworth, present. As the chair says, we've had um, apologies from Councillor Forehead, uh, Christine Forehead and Elaine Forehead. Uh, Councillor Hardin. Present. Councillor Johnston. Present. Councillor Kirby. Present. Councillor Mann. Present. I may have to rejoin because this isn't working very well. Uh, Councillor Miles. Present. Councillor Price. Councillor Pritchard. Present. Uh, Councillor Serralis. Present. Councillor Sargent. Yes, same here. Councillor Simmons. Yep. Councillor Taylor. Present. And Councillor Whittle. OK, uh, thanks, members. and. Uh, Good to see you're available, John. I know you had a few uh, technical difficulties. Hopefully, Councillor Mann um, doesn't disappear as well. But if, if there are difficulties, obviously, hope hoping that they can be overcome. Um, OK, go, go on to item agenda number two. That's the declaration of interest. Councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interests in respect to any item of business on this agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. Are there any declarations of interest at all? No? OK, that's good. OK, we'll move on now then to item agenda number three. And, the, and that's to approve and sign the following minute, minutes of the Policy and Resources Scrutiny Committee held on the 10th of November 2020. So we're just checking for accuracy. Um, so we go through the pages in order. Uh, pages one, two, three, and four. If there are any points of accuracy, can they be noted? Yeah, I move, Chair. OK, somebody I second. Second. OK, we'll now go to the vote if it, um the vote will be available now should be any any second okay the vote is uh is now available chair i wasn't at the meeting so i will abstain that's fine councillor Soralis. Did you want to come in? Councillor Soralis, you got your hand up? Yeah, no, I can't something? get the vote slip up. I, it's just that um, I'm having a bit of difficulty doing that and my hand went up instead. OK, okay. Oh, it, 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 would it be OK to, to verbally um, state yeah, your vote now? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm in favour, thank you. OK, could that be noted, please? OK. Anybody else finding it difficult or is everybody else OK? OK, I just called it now, Chair, so there is problems. It's not right. 
It's not coming up properly on the screen. So a committee, a committee services are aware. Obviously, we've had a couple of members now say that they've had problems. Is it a general problem? Um, is is there an issue? Do we know? No issue for me. Rebecca or Mark, do you, do you know if there are any big issues? I don't, going I don't think there's any issues, Chair. We've got nine, four um, and one abstention, um, but I'm happy to do a roll call if that makes things easier. My, mine's OK now, Chair. All right. And so is mine. Yeah, OK. That should be OK then, if, that, if that's all right to move on now then. OK. OK. If anybody experiences problems with voting, they can record their, their vote as uh, verbally, so that's not not a, not a problem. OK, then in that case now we'll move on. The minutes have been approved. We'll move on to item agenda number four. That's a consideration of any matter referred to this committee in accordance with the calling procedure. Um, I don't believe we have. Can somebody confirm that? That's correct, Chair. Nothing okay. has been called in. OK, item number five, the policy, policy and resources scrutiny Committee Forward Work Programme, and can I uh, hand over now to, to Mark? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, members are asked to consider the Forward Work Programme uh, alongside the Cabinet Work Programme as appended to the report and to suggest any changes. If uh, any member has anything that they think should be included in the um, Forward Work Programme, then um, check the prioritisation chart, which, which is Appendix 3, and uh, get in touch with uh, with uh, scrutiny services in the first instance. Um, so if members are happy, um, I would like to seek approval to publish the um, Policy and Resources Scrutiny Committee Forward Work Programme as appended to the report um, on the Council's website. Thank you, Chair. OK, um, Councillor Stenner is indicated to, to come in. If I could bring Councillor Stenner in. Yes, thanks, Jamie. Uh, on the Forward Work Programme, the flexible working that is actually Councillor Gordon's portfolio. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank, thanks, Councillor Senna, and I'm glad you, you you've raised that because um, uh, this I'm pleased to see that we'll be discussing this on the on the 21st because this committee wanted to consider that more generally. So yeah, this is just an amendment that needs to be made there, and it will be Councillor Gordon and <clears throat> Lynn Donovan um, presenting and ans answering questions on that. Okay. So some, somebody's prepared to move the the forward work program. Yes, yes I moved. Yes. Second. Okay, then we will now go to the vote. Again, if anybody's having any problems, please uh, please indicate, and we can take your vote verbally. If there's one more folk chair, that's probably me. I've fought it twice because it's first time it didn't it didn't seem to register. Okay. That's been carried, chair. So eleven four, uh, zero against and zero abstentions. Okay. Well, thank vote early, vote often, Gary. <laughs> vote early. Vote often. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, Mark. Okay, then we go on to a. Uh, Item agenda number six now is to receive and consider the following cabinet reports, uh, none of which uh, are going to be considered um, this evening. Um, OK, so now we move on to our first item um, of business. Uh, this you, fall, Could oh, I interrupt you, please? Lindsay was, appears to have his hand up. Oh, apologies, not coming up on. Let me have a look. Oh, Councillor Whittle. Uh, sorry, Chair, I just wanted, I've sent a message in to say that I had difficulty uh, getting into the meeting, but as you can clearly hear, at least, um, I am now indeed in the meeting. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Whittle. Okay, then, in, the, in that, that case, we will now go on to item number seven. That's the Corporate Services and Miscellaneous Finance 2020 to 2021 Budget Monitoring Report. Um, Councillor Leonard Stenner will be presenting all four of uh, our reports uh, tonight. So can I, without further ado, hand over to Councillor Stenner. Um, if there are any questions, obviously the scrutiny, um, the um, the finance officers are here as, as well to answer any questions. So Councillor Stenner, would you like to come in? Thank you, Chair. 
The purpose of this report is to inform members of the projected revenue expenditure for the Directorate of Corporate and Miscellaneous Finance for the 2021 financial year. The report projects the anticipated outturn for the Directorate, Directorate of Corporate Services and Miscellaneous Finance based upon expenditure and income trends for the first seven months of this financial year. The recommendations are shown at 3.1. And members are requested to note the content of the report. The reason for the recommendation is to ensure that members are informed of the projected financial position for the Directorate of Corporate Services and Miscellaneous Finance. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor Stenner. Um, I've got a number, number of uh, um, questions. First of all, um, Councillor Miles, please. Oh, first of all, before I before I go go to Councillor Miles, would um, would Steve Harris like to come in at all to add add anything? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Um, the only thing I'd like to to point out to members is that these projections do not include the financial impact of the ongoing COVID pandemic. Um, as you know uh, from a report I presented to Council in September, those costs are being dealt with separately and we are submitting claims to the Welsh Government on a monthly basis for additional costs incurred uh, and obviously receiving grant payments to cover those off. And likewise, with income losses, uh, we are submitting quarterly claims. Uh, and again, in, in most cases, those are being fully funded by the Welsh Government. Just so you to be aware, I will be producing a whole authority budget monitoring report to take in the Cabinet at the end of this month. Uh, which will provide uh, an update on where we are with all of the COVID funding. Thank you, Chair. OK, Steve, thanks. Thank you for that information. Um, Councillor Miles. Thanks. Um, well, my first question I thought was going to be COVID related, so I'm not, not sure about this one now, but um, there are several reference, references to savings from staff being on reduced hours in the report. Um, I thought that might have been because they were off on a sort of a COVID related sort of furlough type arrangement, um, but maybe not then. But what I wanted to know is how how were we able to make savings from that? Were the staff not being paid for their full time hours if they were? I'm assuming they were on reduced hours through no fault of their own. But um, anyway, if somebody could comment on that. And I had a second question as well which was related to several references to overspends in the report. And I would, was wondering if somebody could elaborate a bit on four of the areas of overspends. One was um, an overspend of 53,000 on the transformation team. I wonder what the reasons were for, for that overspend. Similarly, there was a 7,000 overspend on the CMT support which I can see which was uh, to do with um, a support officer post. And I wondered um, why that hadn't been budgeted for originally. I would have thought that was a planned recruitment. Then uh, the third one is there was £125,000 additional charge to complete the audit. So I'd like a little bit of information on that, why the audit charges were high, much higher than expected. And then finally, um, a £65,000 overspend on the trade union budget. Um, again, there wasn't really an explanation as to what that related to. So if somebody could just um, elaborate on that one as well, please. OK, thank you, Councillor Miles. OK, Chair, um, I, I'll try and address these in the first instance. And obviously, if any of the uh, my colleagues from corporate finance want to add anything at the end uh, we can we can ask them to come in uh, first of all the one on the transformation team um, we did have approval um, a few years ago to appoint uh, some transformation managers um, since that time we've also had somebody involved in the transformation team that working on uh, communicating the agent uh, and that's the reason for the overspend uh, we were going to come that from drawing on reserves. 
I, I think it, it. I think um, Steve is very. It's very difficult to, to hear you breaking up uh, a little bit. So uh, proposed. Okay, what I'll do, Chair, I'll turn my camera off. If that's that's okay, yeah, that might be, help that'd with be, the connection. That'd be good. Thanks. Um, so, uh, Steve, you be the last two minutes, uh, please, the Chair. If you okay. could just re- yeah, if you just repeat. I'll, I'll start again, Chair. Yeah, just just on, in case uh, members yes. didn't pick it up. Okay, so going back to the fifty-three k overspend on the transformation team. Uh, members may recall that we do have a number of fixed term um, people in transformation posts and funding was agreed for that um, probably about 18 months ago now. Um, but there's an additional post in that team which is dealing with uh, communications and community engagement. We were look, looking to fund that from reserves in year as well, but given the projected underspend across the directorate, clearly we don't need to draw on reserves, we can just absorb that. But for those of you who've read the draft budget proposals report that's going to cabinet tomorrow, we are now looking to put base budgets in place to ensure that all of the staff in the transformation team have budgets to fund their salaries moving forward. Uh, The 7K uh, overspend in CMT um, support, um, there is an additional uh, post in that area on a temporary basis. Uh, Again, we will be looking to fund that from reserves. uh, So that's the reason for that small overspend. And that post has initially only been agreed for a period, uh, I believe, of six months. Um, If I then turn to the audit fee, um, you may recall from those of you at the audit committee uh, when Barry Morris presented the audit findings report, uh, he did point out many of the challenges that we did face this year uh, and said there would be an an additional fee to pay. And likewise, um, when the cabinet member presented the financial statements uh, to council, Um, Back in November, she also alluded to the fact um, that due to the challenges um, in undertaking the audit in the current circumstances, um, there would be an increase in the fee. Now, that increase has been confirmed at 125k, uh, but I'm sure that members will appreciate um, that due to the impact of the uh, pandemic, it certainly hasn't been a normal year with the audit, the annual accounts having to be completed remotely. And this has uh, presented significant challenges for both finance staff uh, and also for the audit team from Grant Thornton. You may recall as well that I did report to the audit committee and to council that we did lose one of our experienced um, senior members of staff uh, in March, which was clearly at a very um, uh, inopportune time, given it was year end and we had had the audit to come. And this particular member of staff uh, was uh, one of the members of the team who did deal Uh, with the more technical aspects of the accounts. I did report that we have appointed a replacement and uh, that's Rian Williams who is with us this evening, but Rian was on a very steep learning curve uh, and had to spend a considerable amount of time with the auditors, um, obviously to deal with some of these very technical issues um, throughout the audit process. I did also report to members that clearly we've had to reprioritize workloads in a number of areas to deal with the impact of COVID-19. And under normal circumstances, staff would be fully focused on dealing with the audited accounts. Uh, but of course, there have been several competing demands this year. And the best example I can give of this um, is dealing with the process and the business grants and the need to establish new systems and processes to ensure that those payments were made as quickly as possible. And members will be aware that to date, we have paid businesses in excess of £40 million uh, for those grants. So really, just summing this up, these challenges did lead to significant delays with the audit process taking longer than it would under normal circumstances. And this did result in the additional fee that's uh, outlined in the report. It's important to stress uh, that despite these challenges, um, the 2019-20 annual accounts were approved by Council on the 24th of November and were subsequently signed off by the Auditor General on the 26th of November with an unqualified audit opinion which did mean that the statutory deadline of the 30th of November was met. Just for your information as well, members, this hasn't been the case in many local authorities, with the Chartered Institute of Public Finance recently reporting that 55% of audit opinions, that's 265 local authorities, were not issued in England by the statutory deadline of the 30th of November. Furthermore, the robust audit work undertaken and the recommendations that were in the auditor's report will ensure that we will be well placed moving forward. And in fact, many of those recommendations have now already been addressed. And on the uh, trade union um, overspend of 65K, I understand that that is the subject of ongoing discussions with the various unions. 
Um, I believe Ed may have been involved in that and may want to say something, but the reason for it is we are trying to look for a, um, a consistent approach with the various unions. Um, and until we do that, unfortunately, there is a budgetary shortfall at the present time. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, Ed, would you, Ed, if you're, if you're there, would you like to come in on anything? I am here, Chair. <laughs> Call you, it, Ed. Come on in. Yeah. Um, yeah, just on that, in terms of the, the trade union agreement, um, members will appreciate we've been in discussions with our trade unions around um, uh, facilities agreement for a number of months, We're picking those conversations up again now uh, in the new year. The idea behind that is to make sure that the facilities agreement that we have in place is equitable to all of our trade union colleagues. Uh, that overspend is as a result of a, a small increase uh, recently in terms of some additional support that's been provided uh, to one of those trade unions and those conversations will balance that out over the uh, the coming period. In, in terms of Councillor Miles's other question as well around um, the savings attached to working from home and the reduced hours, um, no, no staff have been furloughed, no staff have been forced <coughs> to reduce their hours, those would have been requests from staff and the savings attached to working from home would ordinarily be attached to budgets like mileage, for example, where there's a lot less business miles being traveled because of the technology that we're now using. So th those two things are in the report, but slightly separate. Thanks, members. Oh, thanks. On the, la on the last one in particular, I, I, yeah, I can see I read it to mean that there was a saving on wages. That's what I thought. Um... No, I understand that. It's, um, it's not clear, is it? So uh, hopefully that clarifies. <laughs> yeah, okay. thanks very much. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Steve. Um, Councillor Mann, is is there something specific on on one of the one of the answers? Because I haven't got you down to speak yet. But oh, uh, 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 apologies, Chair. I think it's a bit I missed at the at the start. Uh, but um, it is to do with the question that was raised about the transformation team. Um, many of us will recall that the transformation team is supposed to be paying its way. It's a bit surprising to learn that they're now actually costing extra money rather than paying their way. Uh, well, I I don't know if they're paying their way or not. Maybe somebody can can enlighten us. But um, they seem seem to be costing more rather than uh, rather than paying their way at the moment. Well, well, I, before I bring um, Ed in on this, I, I know we we had a uh, previous scrutiny session in which we were given given quite a lowdown on what the the transformation um, team are attempting. Obviously, in very very difficult circumstances. Uh, but if Ed, if you'd like to come in and answer Councillor Mann's point. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think members, just for clarity and apologies, Councillor Mann, if you missed this in in an earlier delivery from Steve. Um, but when the transformation, um, co when colleagues from trans the transformation team were appointed, there was only three of them that were appointed initially into that team. Um, the additional expenditure here is to do with the fact that we've moved a fourth resource in beyond that uh, initial report being signed off, specifically to deal with communications and engagement. So effectively, it's it's not an increase based on on the contents of that initial report. It is an additional member of staff that is incurring that additional expenditure. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Um, okay. Margaret, yeah. Margaret, yeah, you thanks. Had a, thanks, Chair. You had, a, you had a point, Margaret, on the transformation. If just before I bring Roy in, as it's on the on, on the same issue, did you still want to raise a question on that? Yes, please, Jamie. Go on then, uh, Margaret. Um, I'm not sure who it's uh, directed to. Probably Ed. But as far as I can see, the underspend appears to be mainly due to vacancies. Now, is this because the transformation team hasn't completed its work, so they're on hold, or is it something else? That was one of the questions I have to ask, but that was the main one on transformation. OK. Could someone answer that for me, please? Ed, would you like to come back in? Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks, Councillor Sargent. Um, in terms of the, uh, the the elements of the report relating to vacancies, those are not attached to the transformation team completing its work. Um, what we've had is a number of restructures across the service over uh, the, the last year or so. In fact, you know, restructures are fairly um, fairly readily undertaken these days. But because of the impact of COVID on us being able to recruit, interview, and bring staff into those posts. It has delayed us uh, from appointing folk into the post, and on that basis, the salary is set aside and uh, is captured as an underspend. So there, there isn't a direct link between the work of the transformation team and any delays in recruitment. That is very much down to the impact of COVID over the last nine months. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Ed. Can I bring Steve Harris in, please? 
Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just just wanted to add really to what I just said. I mean, all members know for a number of years now we've been dealing with um, difficult financial circumstances and have uh, in a situation where year on year we've had to find significant savings. So if you look at trends over recent years, you will see uh, trends of underspends uh, in corporate services and indeed in, in many other areas. But very often that's down to the approach that we take where we identify savings in advance. So if we are going to delete posts uh, to support the budget in subsequent years, then clearly we will hold those back as vacancies and that will contribute then to the, to the level of underspend. Uh, but what I'd also like to reassure members is underspends at year end are transferred back into reserves. 50% uh, within corporate services would go into corporate services reserves and the balance would go into the general fund. And then we do reinvest those reserves uh, in a number of key areas. So, you know. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Ed. Can I come back in, please, Jamie? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, comes to Sergeant. Um, yeah, Thank you, I completely understand what you're saying. So can, while I'm talking about revised structures, can can you tell me what the revised structures are in the people's services, please. Uh, is there anybody? I'm not, not, not quite sure that that, that was in the report, Councillor Yes, it's on page 15. Right. Sorry, uh, 16. Yeah, sorry, Councillor Sargent. I think there's probably a whole heap of detail that sits behind this report that members haven't got access to this evening. I'm wondering if you've got some, or you or other members have got specific questions about the restructures in certain teams. If you'd like me to share that with you outside the meeting so you can uh, establish exactly what's going on. And then if you've got further questions, you can uh, engage with me directly if that suits. Yes, that's fine. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that. Yeah, ju just just before I bring in Councillor Sorales, obviously uh, members will be aware that um, I did send send on some information. I think it was yesterday regarding the the underspends over the last five years, and it's not it's noticeable that the the underspends have been um, reducing quite dramatically, actually, in terms of corporate services and miscellaneous finances, from three point two three seven million in sixteen seventeen down to one point. 595 million um, in 2020, uh, 2021. So I think picking up on what Steve Harris has said, if I could ask the question, you know, is 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 that um, is that purposeful in that um, that money now is going towards things such as the place shaping agenda? You know, what's what what we've what we've heard about in the last six months in particular? Yeah. Could I ask Thank Steve you. that question? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to keep my camera off because I'm having some trouble with my uh, connection this evening. But but yes, you are correct, Chair. Um, you know, certainly the underspends that go back into the general fund uh, over the last few years, they have been redirected into capital earmark reserves. Uh, I anticipate we'll be having a discussion about this later on on the reserves report. Um, but that money um, will be released um, in due course, obviously, to fund some of the major investments we're going to do as part of place shaping. Um, the only other comment I wanted to make is you're right, um, the level of underspend has been reducing, which for me demonstrates things are becoming more difficult. And I think it's fair to say that had it not been for the pandemic, then some of these restructures that are currently um, on hold or, or, you know, not fully implemented, um, they would have been fully implemented by now had it not been for the COVID pandemic. And the level of projected underspend would have been uh, much less than it is in the report at the moment. And certainly, once the restructures are in place and we've appointed to posts, then obviously the financial position is going to look much tighter moving forward. OK, thank you, Steve. Can I bring in Councillor Sorales, please? Yeah, just a quick question I have. Uh, 516 and 517 uh, refers to an underspend because employees have not reached the top of their pay scales. Um, what prevents them ha that happening? Is it is it because it'll occur later in the year or is it qualifications? What's the reason behind that? Happy to come in on that one, Chair, if you'd like yeah, to. Yeah, of course, yeah, Steve. Um, when people are appointed to their, uh, to a post, obviously if it's a new appointment, they normally start at the bottom of the scale, and then it can take three or four years, obviously, to reach the top of the scale. Uh, so when we budget, we do budget the top of scale because obviously that's the prudent thing to do because eventually all of the post holders will be at the top. But obviously during the period where they're working their way through the grades, 
uh, they will be paid slightly less in given years and that will result uh, in an underspending that year but eventually they will be at the top of the grade and that will then match the budget uh, that's been set okay thank you chair thank you steve okay there are no uh, further questions so the the recommendation is on page 15 in your packs and members have requested to note the contents of the report chair, chair, have. sorry councillor man sorry i i I, th I think I failed to tell you about this uh, for the for the aforementioned reason. Uh, can I just ask on the two brief ones, really? Is five five three eight the capital receipts? Uh, I I'm just wondering whether uh, maybe Steve or Ed can tell us whether or not the authority is intending to use that particular facility, which seems to be come available. Okay. Somebody Sorry. like to come in and and answer that question? Yeah, sorry, Councillor Man. Which paragraph in the report was that? 5.3.8, Steve. Uh, right. Page, oh, um, page 31, I think, is it? Page 31. Uh, that's the next report, Councillor Man. Can we take that question when we get to that report? Oh, I, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> apologies. <laughs> Slap of the wrist there, Councillor Man. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, then we will. Uh, members are requested to note the contents of the report, which, which we have. And we'll move on now to um, item number number eight. Already anticipating a question off Councillor Mann. Um, so um, the capital strategy report 2021 to 22. Uh, can I uh, hand over to Councillor Leonard Stenner to um, introduce the report? Thank you, Chair. The purpose of this report is to submit prior to its presentation to Council the authority's capital strategy report for 21-22 financial year in accordance with the Prudential Code that was introduced by the Local Government Act 2003. The report cross-references to the report by the Corporate Director of Education and Corporate Services on Revenue and Capital Budgets and the Treasury Management Annual Strategy, Capital Finance, Prudential Indicators and Minimum, minimum Revenue Provision Policy for 2021-2022. The capital strategy outlines the principles and framework at the very high level that shape the authority's capital investment proposals. The principal aim is to deliver an affordable programme of capital consistent with a financial strategy that contributes to the achievement of the Council's priority and objectives as set out in the authority's corporate plan. Consider associated risks, recognise financial constraints and over the longer term and represent value for money. The strategy defines at the highest level how the capital programme decision making identifies the issues and options that influence capital spending and sets out how the resources and capital programme will be managed. In addition, the capital strategy should comply with the Prudential Code for Local Authority Capital Investment. The key objectives of this code are to ensure that the capital investment plan are affordable, prudent and sustainable. The Prudential Code for the Local Authority underpins the strategy. The key objectives which are shown in the summary of the report are that capital investment plans are affordable, prudent and sustainable. The Treasury management decisions are taken in accordance with good professional practice. That local strategic planning, asset management and proper option appraisals are supported. The recommendation is shown at 3.1 for scrutiny to note the annual capital strategy report and the reasons for the recommendations are shown at 4.1 and 4.2 of the report. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Stenner. Um, would it, would any, any of the uh, finance officers like to come in to supplement what Councillor Stenner has said? Or wait uh, for questions? Oh, go on, Steve. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say I've got nothing to add. Um, okay. th this, this is a standard report that we're required to produce by SIPFA. Uh, and it'll go on um, from here this evening to council when the budget is presented uh, on the 24th of February. Um, and between us, we'll be happy to take any questions. OK. Um, Councillor Mann. Oh, thanks, Chair. Try and get the right place this time. <laughs> so it's 5.3.8 on page 31. Uh, it's the uh, capitalisation directive that the, uh, the uh, Welsh Government issued, uh, allowing authorities to uh, use uh, capital receipts for revenue purposes. Uh, just wondering whether either probably Steve or Ed can clarify whether or not use has been made of that particular facility. 
I think it's probably fair to say, Chair, that if I put my hand up to answer this one, Steve would pass out. So I'm going to defer to him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm quite happy for Ed to take it. So no problem. Um, no, Councillor Man, at the moment, we haven't made um, use of that capitalisation directive. And the reason for that uh, is that the capital receipts um, that we do have, uh, which are again um, included in the uh, report later on reserves, the plan is that you know we'll be using those um, to fund uh, the play shaping agenda and the investment proposals that will be shared with members uh, later later this month and moving into February. Okay, thanks, Steve. Could I do the other one now, uh, Chair? Of course, you can. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's 5.5 again, uh, page 31. Uh, investments for service purposes. Uh, there's a whole list of different things there that uh, a capital budget of 148,000 that we can use for various uh, reasons. Again, uh, could I ask what use has been made of that particular fund, please? OK, I'll. Um... I'll invite either Ryan or Dave Roberts to come in on this one because they they they'll have more detail on that I'll have available. Um, so if one of you two would like to come in, please. Okay. Sorry, can you just repeat what you said, Colin? Because I can't quite find the um, references you're referring to. Yeah, it's uh, it's paragraph five point five investments for service purposes uh, towards the bottom of page thirty one. It's uh, it's how we've used that uh, that fund. Uh, well, assuming we have used it in various ways, really. Yeah, that's that's been fully utilised this year. It's um it's grants that are given to um local businesses by the well they're the BERT team now, which is the Business Enterprise Renewal Team. Um, so. Dave might be able to give a bit more information on that, but I know that fund has been fully utilised this year, giving out grants to look, um, local businesses. OK, Dave, would you like to come in? I haven't got a lot more detail than that, only that they give out grants to businesses to help support them. And based on applications they get in. I don't just, have just any a, further details yeah, just a quick, hand. quick question on that, Dave, um, is that fully sort of audited in terms of um, your public sort of money being distributed to the businesses, or is that just um, you, you know um, arranged between the business and the local authority? They submit applications um, to the business team, who then vet them, and is a yeah. process that goes through with the appropriate member to agree to fund these. Okay. Okay. Steve, you'd like to come back and then I'll bring Colin back in if he wants a supplementary. Steve Harris? Yeah, I basically just wanted to confirm what Dave just said. There are appropriate governance arrangements in place for these grants. And Councillor Mann, if you'd like more detail, I can have a chat with um, Paul Hudson and we can give you a flavour of the kind of um, support that is being offered through these funds. OK, yeah, uh, thanks, Steve. Uh, what I was going to ask was, um, whether we actually get a return on any of that investment. Uh, maybe that could be part of your uh, your follow up. I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a conversation with Paul, Councillor Mann, and I'll, I'll share some more information with you. OK, thanks very much. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Councillor Mann. Um, I've got no, no further indications of questions. So um, if not, we're, the recommendation is on page 28 and that the capital, the annual capital strategy report is noted. Um, Mark, wasn't it a vote that needs to take place on this, or, or, or am I not correct on that? That's well, right. Yeah, I, I'm advised that um, if we could have a vote on on this recommendation, um, okay. so um, that that, that this um, ca capital strategy is duly noted. All right. Okay. So that the capital strategy report is noted, and we've got a vote for, against, or abstain, and that's appeared now in the voting column. Yeah, Chair, if you could get someone to move and second. Oh, please. yeah, apologies. Could somebody prepared to move that? I'll move that, Chair. Councillor Adams. Yes. Second, Chair. Councillor Johnson, Councilor Johnson. Second. OK, thank you, members. OK, feel free to vote. Looks as though the technical difficulties are, are getting a lot better now by the looks of it. That's good. Unless anybody's uh, still struggling, I don't think they are. OK. 
Ich das bin carried now. Yes, yes, that's carried, Chair. 11 for zero against and zero abstentions. Okay, thanks, members, for, for voting. Um, <clears throat> can we now move on to item number nine? That's the Treasury Management Annual Strategy Capital Finance, Finance Prudential Indicators and Minimum Revenue Provision Policy for 2021-2022. There we go. Um, can I move, on, move this to uh, Councillor Elena Senate to introduce the report, please? Thank you, Chair. The purpose of this report is for scrutiny's consideration prior to its presentation to Council. To submit for consideration prior to its presentation to Council a data set of prudential indicators relevant to Treasury manager, management and capital finance. The report also cross-references to the reports by the Corporate Director of Education and Corporate Services on Revenue and Capital Budgets are also considered in this meeting. To submit for consideration prior to its presentation to Council, the minimum revenue provision policy to be adopted by the authority for 21-22, Appendix 7, is based on an indicative capital programme. The revised code of practice for Treasury management in the public services provides that an annual strategy be submitted to members on or before the start of the financial year to outline the activities planned within the parameters of the Treasury Management Policy Statement and the Treasury Management Practices. The Local Government Act 2003 also requires the authority to set out its Treasury Management Strategy for borrowing for the forthcoming year and to prepare an annual investment strategy, which sets out the policies for managing its investments, giving priority to security, liquidity of the, these those investments under Section 15 of the 2003 Act, Welsh Government issued guidance on local government investments, which is incorporated within the report. Definitions of local government investments are given in Appendix 1. Under the provisions of the Local Government Act 2003, the local authorities, Capital Finance and Accounting Regulations 2003, and subsequent amendments and SIPFA's the Prudential Code for Capital Finance in local authorities, the authority is obliged to approve and publish a number of indicators relevant to capital finance and treasury management. With effect from the 1st of April 2008, Welsh Government introduced the Local Authorities Regulation 2008, which requires the authority to prepare an annual minimum revenue provision policy statement. This report sets out what the authority needs to do in order to comply with this requirement. The recommendations are shown at 3.1 to 3.9 of the report, and the reasons for the recommendations are the annual strategy report is a requirement of the SIPTA Code of Practice for Treasury Management in the Public Services, the investment strategy is a requirement of the Local Government Act 2003 and to comply with the legislative framework and requirements as indicated in paragraphs 2.1 to 2.5 of the report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stenner. Um, would any of the finance officers like to supplement what Councillor Stenner has said? If not, then there's, we've got a couple of questions. No, Chair, I'm happy to move on to questions. Yeah, that's that's fine. OK, my uh, first question that they linked um, is um, Councillor Mike Adams first, followed by Councillor Johnson. Thanks, Jay. Um, I remember from the pre-meeting, it was hardly really able to be described as a as a question. It was a long statement, really, about how difficult uh, that we can expect over the next 10 years even to have a really stable economy uh, both uh, domestically, European-wide or worldwide uh, with all the, the, the pandemic issues going on um, and it is going to be really very, very difficult for us to plan for for much, much more. And I think that was backed up by other statements which you may well have uh, following that uh, and I'm sure that's the kind of uh, report uh, tones that we'll get from uh, both Steve and, and Ed and others uh, so it wasn't really a, a question no, no. directed as such but that general statement so I apologize if uh, it came oh, across a, as a question. No not a, not a problem no um, um, if, if I could move to Councillor Johnson and, and yeah, did I, yeah. yep yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think I was kind of like Mike and, uh, you know, 
I'm thinking for anyone to try to predict what the future is going to be, especially with interest rates, they must be Nostradamus mark too, you know, because uh, I don't think anyone can see what the next year, never mind the next decade, you know, is going to bring, you know, especially, you know, are we going to see more and more? We've seen a decade of austerity now. Are we going to see another decade? So, because um, someone has to pay for this, you know, this pandemic, and uh, and uh, and I know it'll be the people at the bottom, as was the one that paid for the first one. So, okay, it's not a question as such. No, no, that's that's understandable. Are there are there any any further questions at all? No. In that could, case, could I, just, could, could I yeah, come in on this Steve, one, yeah. Jake? Yeah. It's, it's just an observation, really, on the comments that are being made. Um, yeah, both both uh, councillors are, are dead right. Oh. Um, you know that the future outlook, um, unfortunately, um, is is looking a little bleak. Um, I've been called a grim reaper in the past, but never not Nostradamus. So that could be a new <laughs> one now. But uh, but 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 again, um, on Thursday evening we have the joint scrutiny meeting where we'll be looking at the draft budget proposals. And, you know, I've just given a flavour in that report uh, in the absence, if I'm honest, of much, you know, evidence uh, to back it up at this stage. But I've given a flavour of what the financial out outlook could be uh, for the four years beyond 21-22. Uh, and, you know, there's a range of scenarios in there which we can discuss in a bit more detail. Um, but, you know, the savings uh, could range anything between 8 million up to 32 million, depending uh, on what the local government settlement looks like moving forward. Yeah. Absolutely. Can I bring Councillor Johnson in um, and then Councillor Mann, please? Yeah, just a quick point, Chair. It's just Steve Nostradamus Harris does sound nice. Got a nice ring to it. So um, I look forward to his many predictions. <laughs> OK. Oh, was, was that a mistake, Councillor Mann? Did you want to come in or do you just... Yeah, uh, please, please, yeah, if I may. Um... I'm not, I'm not sure about the Nostradamus, but I, I certainly agree with Gary's comments about who's going to pay for this uh, situation as paid for the 2008. It's the people at the bottom, unfortunately, uh, the same as is happening with the COVID at the moment. But uh, if I could come, Chair, to page 40, uh, 3.7, uh, I'm sure Steve has got his answer ready for this. But um, do we really need to be borrowing 37.2 million for the general fund? Um, when uh, when the capital program is usually substantially underspent, I, I'm not querying the WHQS so much because we do see new spending money on that one, but certainly the general capital program we have a record of basically underspending it. Okay, Steve, would you like to come yeah, in on that? I'll come back on that one, Chair. Um, that's 37 million pound borrowing requirement is actually made up of borrowing approvals from a number of years. Um, so we've had approval to borrow to support the capital program, um, as I say, over, over a, an extended period. But we haven't borrowed to date because we've been able to use um, cash balances that are available to the authority, essentially linked to our reserves and investments. So rather than borrow, uh, we will use um, our own cash balances because clearly that's more financially prudent than incurring costs uh, on interest rates and debt charges. We have to put it in the report. Uh, to ensure we have budget cover um, but at the moment certainly in respect of the general fund i am not expecting to have to borrow in the next um financial year so it's, it's still a it's still a precautionary measure then steve we we, we have to have it in the councillor man because at some point as i say we're using internal balances but there will come a point in the future where we'll need to replenish those balances and we need the budget there to be able to do that yeah chair could i also ask on um Five four thirteen. It's page uh, uh, forty four. It's okay. a municipal municipal bond agency. Uh, is there any intention that the authority gets involved with that one, Steve? Again, I'll uh, I'll invite uh, my colleagues to come in on that one. Certainly, it's not something at the moment um, that we're looking to do. That's not to say that we wouldn't moving forward. Um, but I'm just wondering if Rian would like to comment on that one. I thought it might be Ed. <laughs> yeah, completely agree with both councillors and the comments they made in that. You know, as you will be aware, the interest rates are rock bottom at the moment. And, you know, like all lo local authorities, we are looking um, at alternative investments in order to meet our usual returns. At the moment, we're not looking to invest in the mu municipal bond agency. 
but we are like in constant dialogue with our treasury advisors looking at more investments we can make um you know so we are looking at some longer term investments which we'll be making to look into like the ccla property fund um and we are looking at some reits which are real real estate investment trusts um they invest in social housing which kind of meets the um the social and the environmental factors that we like to make in our investments so um we are looking to make our returns better, but as you say, the interest rates are, are very low at the moment. So we're just looking at alternative options. Okay. S Steve, and then finally, uh, uh, Councillor Mann, if he wants to come back in. Yeah, it's just to um, to expand really on what we and Jess said. Um, you know, we, we, we did make a commitment last year to, to look at some longer term investments, but unfortunately, due to the pandemic and the uncertainty for a number of months, we didn't progress that. But as Rian says, we've been meeting with Arlen Close recently. Um, I did set them the challenge um, of coming up with a portfolio that would generate an additional million pounds in investment income. Um, so we're meeting them again later this month. Uh, everything we're looking to do would be in line with the current Treasury management strategy, so we wouldn't need to change it. Uh, but we would look to replace some of that investment income that we were anticipating initially um, through making some new investments now over the coming months. I, what, what, what I'd like to say as well, I, I'm mindful it's been some time um, since we've had um, Arlen Close come and talk uh, to members. Uh, so if members are, are minded for me to do so, I think I'll set up um, a seminar uh, where they can give um, a bit of a, uh, an update on the economic outlook and also some of the things we'll be planning to do with our investments. Yep, I think that's a, a good idea, Steve. And uh, would that be an all member seminar yeah. or just policy <laughs> resources? We yeah. normally do it as an all member seminar. Oh, I think that'll be a good idea. OK, then, members, this, I can't see any further further yeah. questions. Chair, I did. Uh, could I just uh, come back for a moment? Oh. Um, yeah, I uh, I think I certainly welcome Steve's last suggestion. Uh, it's probably it's at least a year since we had the last uh, session with our link post. Uh, the, the question I was going to ask uh, has pretty well been answered because um, uh, I think some of us will recall the uh, 20 million that we were going to invest in, uh, let's say, more uh, more lucrative or more productive investments. And um, uh, the last I heard of it was that that had been delayed and I wanted to check whether or not it had. But Steve has actually mentioned that. Um, are we... When uh, when you anticipate the decisions on that, Steve, because obviously the longer it the longer the delay goes on, the more money that is being lost. I imagine. Yeah, Councillor Man, as I said, we're looking to finalise um, a proposal with Arlen Close later this month, um, because what we're doing is already within the Treasury Management Strategy. We'll look to move on that then um, with, without any further delay. Okay, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Chair. OK, the recommendation is uh, is on page 40 of your packs and, the, and they're listed 3.1 to 3.9. Can I have somebody to move the recommendation, please? Move. Somebody prepare the second? Seconded, Chair. OK, um, the vote I think is now is available. That's been carried, Chair, 11-4, zero against and zero abstentions. OK, thank, thank you for that. OK, now we move on to our, the final um, agenda item, and that's the upda update on reserves. I, there's a little bit of interference. Um, I'm not sure if everybody's got their mic switched off. If everybody, if everybody, apart from the Chair and the Vice Chair, could do so, and then we might be able to clear that up, OK? I think that's better. OK, the update on reserves, item number 10. Can I hand over to Councillor Leonard Stenner to introduce the report? And um, finance officers will be on hand to answer any questions you might have. OK, Leonard. Thank you, Chair. The purpose of this report is to prevent to, to present the scrutiny committee with details of the usable reserves held by the authority. Details are provided of the audited balances as of the 1st of April 2020 
along with updated balances reflecting in new adjustments, action to date for the 2020-21 financial year. Appendix 1 provides details of the authority's usable reserves, which totaled £139.425 million pounds as at the 1st of April 2020. Based on an assessment of in-year adjustments, action to date, the current balance on usable reserves is £140.501 million. The recommendation is shown at 3.1 of the report, and members of the scrutiny committee are asked to note the content of the report. The reason for recommendation is to re ensure that the scrutiny committee is provided with the details of the usable reserves held by the authority. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Senna. Just, just before I bring in, in questions, I think it's, it's important to note that um, the general fund balances are now 10.684 million. And that does represent a significant drop on the previous year when it totaled 15.022 million. And 5.2.3 says that um, at the meeting on the 20, 20th of February 2020, Council approved a recommendation for the act, act, acting Section 151 officer that the balance should be maintained at 3% uh, of the net revenue budget. So I, if, if I could just ask um, Steve uh, probably a question on whether we're just down to the absolute limit on, on the 3% now. Uh, yes, Chair. I mean, the 3% is the, the recommended minimum on the general fund balance. Um, you know, and when you think we're an authority that's got turnover in excess of um, half a billion pounds per annum, um, you know, really, it's it's a drop in the ocean. But the 3% is the minimum recommended uh, balance. Uh, and, you know, I've had that confirmed with our external auditors in the past. That's certainly what they would expect to see. Um, but clearly, there's a number of reserves outside of that within this report that make up the total figure. Uh, and I'm sure members will have questions about some of those. Uh, and the reason we've been bringing this report, we've been doing it now for a number of years. Um, back in 2016, Cabinet did agree a reserve strategy. Obviously, PR scrutiny uh, were consulted on that prior to the um, approval. And as part of that, we did um, undertake that we would provide an update on reserves every year. Um, in previous years as well, um, we set a cap uh, on retained underspend reserves within directorates of 3%. And in previous years, we've had recommendations to utilise reserves where that cap has been uh, exceeded. But this year, for the first time, the cap hasn't been exceeded in any areas. And that's why we're not recommending um, any investments uh, with, the, with the excess above that cap. Um, apart from that, Chair, I'm, I'm sure there'll be questions. And uh, I'm just ha uh, happy to take the questions along with my colleagues. Thank you, Steve, for that additional information. Um, first question is from Councillor Brenda Miles. Councillor Miles. Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting myself then. Oh, not a problem. <laughs> okay. Yes, I was all over the place. Um, my Yes, my question really was to do with, um, there's a policy that's been in place for a number of years, and, and it's been mentioned already tonight, that allows um, directorates to retain 50% of their underspends up to a maximum of 3% of their net revenue budget. I wondered if that policy will need to be revisited this year, given that we've gone through some exceptional circumstances. Would directorates need to be able to keep more of their um, underspends? Um, we're seeing underspends coming through from various different kind of um, places at the moment. So I wondered if that's, if that's going to be a problem. Uh, yeah, Chair, if you'd like me to come in on that one. Yeah, of course, um, Steve, yeah. I'm certainly not minded to change that approach at the present time. Uh, the reason we do that is because it does actually incentivize um, budget holders to effectively manage their budgets. Um, because, you know, we all know that without that incentive there, there may be circumstances where people, you know, spend money at year end just to ensure they don't lose their budget. So it's about, you know, incentivizing people to manage budgets effectively. And I think, as I said earlier, because the financial impact of COVID is effectively being managed outside of core budgets at the moment, I don't think there's a case to make any changes. But it is, Councillor Miles, something obviously as we move forward now and the financial position, as I said, um, is likely to worsen. It may be something we'll need to take a look at at some point in the future. 
I, I was thinking of them keeping more a uh, higher percentage because uh, things are so delayed now that um, they perhaps they would need to be a sort of a, a reserve there so they can recover some of that lost ground as we go forward. Um, yeah, just 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 to remind you, we did set aside. You agreed as a council to set aside two point seven million pounds anyway to help deal um, with the impact of COVID. So we already have that set aside. Mm -hmm. When we get to the end of this financial year. I will review the position in it, and if I feel we need to set aside more money because obviously we don't have the, the certainty around Welsh Government funding next year, um, then I may well recommend that we put more into that reserve. But at the moment, um, I'm not anticipating changing the rules around what directorates are allowed to keep. OK. OK, thank you, Steve. Um, any any further questions on, on this report? No? OK, Councillor Mann. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I, I, I know the answer, but I'll ask the question. Uh, Steve, the uh, first of all, Jamie mentioned the um, the 10 million. Well, I think you said that's on the 3 percent, which is recommended anyway. Uh, basically, the 15 million was too high last year. But uh, quite honestly, I, I, I have difficulty in knowing why we need to sit on the in the amount of money we have. I know it's all broken down into various things, but uh, I think we're something like the second or third highest in, in Wales for the amount of money that we're that, that, that we have uh, in reserve. And in fact, uh, far higher than Cardiff, for example, which is a much bigger authority than we are. Um, I, I honestly wonder what the justification is for the amount of money that that we're uh, that we that we're not using. I mean, uh, if we don't, I, I accept the fact that we need reserves, but uh, the, it's it's the sheer amount of reserves that I have great difficulty with. If I if I could just come in, I, I mean, Councillor Mann, is is there any particular reserve? I mean, I, obviously on the headline figures, uh, you know, multi millions. I totally understand that. Is there any particular reserve you uh, you think should be cut, or any a group of reserves in order to put that to Steve or a Leonard or any other finance well, officers? I I think uh, I think a former leader claimed he'd gone through it uh, line by line. Now, Chair, uh, I mean, I I'm sure we could do that if we've got time to do it, but um, you know, it's it's the it's the sheer amount uh, of of that and. Uh, uh, but it probably would need a an exercise. I'm not sure when it was done uh, last to actually go through each um, each line and uh, and justify or not the amount that's in it. OK, Steve, if, if you, could you come in on uh, Councillor Mann's points there? Yeah, sure, no problem at all. Um, one, one of the first things I'll say is that, um, you know, some of these reserves are particularly high, things like um, the PFI reserve, um, you know, that that has to be there to meet future obligations. Yeah. Uh, we have insurance earmark reserves. We need to make sure we can meet our, ins uh, meet our insurance commitments going forward. But but I'd just like to remind members that um, certainly on the capital reserves, uh, in the report that was agreed last year when this was presented to you, you agreed to set aside 24 and a half million to support the place shaping agenda. So you know, within the totals that you're seeing tonight, that 24 and a half million is there now waiting to be used when we come forward with place shaping um, proposals. I've also said in the report that I am reviewing these reserves line by line at the moment, because if I feel as the 151 officer that we can free up some of these reserves to boost the investments in the place shaping agenda, then I will be making those recommendations and members will be consulted on that. And can I also remind members that we do make use of these balances we get returns on investments, um, which we've already talked about earlier. We're trying to uh, improve that. And again, I mentioned earlier this concept of internal borrowing, where we use some of these cash balances in lieu of borrowing and we save money on our debt charges. But what I can guarantee you as a scrutiny committee is I will be going through this in some detail over the coming months and I will be meeting uh, with uh, heads of service. Uh, Rian has been um, meeting heads of service in um, recent weeks. Uh, to talk about capital commitments moving forward because Councillor Mann, I know on numerous occasions you've mentioned the level of slippage, uh, so we will be addressing that. And as part of those meetings, I have asked for confirmation from service managers and heads of service of exactly when they will be committing their resources. If I'm satisfied uh, with their responses, that's fine. But if I have any concerns in any of those areas, I will be looking to claw some of that money back also to support play shaping. So. 
I will be undertaking that work with Ryan um, over the next couple of months. Yeah, could I just comment, Chair, if you don't mind? Um, oh, that's fine. Um, I I can't remember how many years ago, Steve, but it's uh, it's probably probably three could be longer where um, proposals were put to cabinet to I think to free up something like twenty one million, and by the end of the cabinet meeting, I think that had gone down to fifteen, and things like Brexit were mentioned as a as a reason not to actually free up uh, some some of that money. Uh, it does seem that there. There are always reasons, even when things are proposed, not to actually do it. Now, I don't know whether there's any more determination uh, this time round, uh, if when you've gone through this exercise, but uh, we just I say we just seem to be uh, piling up the amount we're we're uh, we're sitting on uh, rather than rather than reducing it. And uh, uh, I just don't think it's good value for money for the uh, for the residents of the borough, chair. Oh. Well, thank you for that, Councillor Councillor Man. Before, before I bring anybody else in, I mean that the role of the scrutiny committee is obviously to give um, give their opinion on what reserves should stay in place, what shouldn't be. Um, obviously, um, these reserves do go into millions, but I haven't as yet um, uh, got from anybody anything that they would cut in in particular. Um, Mr. Could, I, could I, I just come back in on the point raised by Councillor Man, if that's okay? Yeah. Um, Yes, there have been instances in the past where there have been reasons why the total sums haven't been uh, transferred into capital earmark reserves. Um, I don't know whether Leonard will want to back me up on this one, but the cabinet are fully committed to the play shaping agenda. OK, and based on the work I've been doing to date, we the, the, the figure is now more around uh, the 30 million mark and we are still going through the reserves to try and increase that sum. Uh, so I just want to give you that reassurance, um, you know, that we will be looking to put very firm, positive proposals uh, through scrutiny committees and to cabinet uh, to release whatever funding we can to support the play shaping agenda. Before I bring in Ed and, and Mike Adams, can I bring in Councillor Stenner in, 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 in particular with the play shaping agenda? Obviously, it's mentioned a number of times through, through the report. Uh, I must say I'm, I'm excited to, you know, to, to hear more about it. So from as a, as a cabinet member, would you be able to share anything with the scrutiny committee? Well, we're 100% committed to the place, the place shaping um, that we are going to be undertaking. Um, we're going to be using a lot of money on the place shaping. With regards to, to sitting on reserves, we've never been in more uncertain times as we are at the moment. And I think those reserves are going to be a godsend in future years to come. So thank goodness that we've got something to fall back on because none of us, nobody knows what we are going to face in future years after this pandemic. Well, th thank you, Eleni, for that. Um, can I bring in Ed and then Mike Adams? Um, yeah, th thank you, Chair. I'm just um, building on Councillor Stenner's point. Um, I think members will be aware that Audit Wales now view Caerphilly to be one of the most resilient uh, local authorities in Wales. I think it's a good time to be in that place. Um, also, members will be aware, I'm sure you've all been busy reading your papers for the budget session on Thursday evening, that there are a number of additional project management resources being sought by the Council, along with the, um, the, the intention to uh, cement in permanent roles a number of key roles from across the organisation that will help us deliver this. So I, I guess, um, you know, taking Councillor Mann's point, you know, we recognise that with a big play shaping agenda ahead of us, lots of money to be spent, lots of investment to be delivered across the county borough. We need some resources to make that happen. Um, and I look forward to uh, the discussion on Thursday night and hopefully the support of all members in, in getting the right level of resources in to make sure that that investment happens in a timely manner and at the scale that we're all looking for. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Ed. Uh, Councillor Mike Adams. Thank you, Chair. Actually, uh, the comments that we just heard from Elinid, from Ed, and previously from Steve, are all those things that uh, over the last few years, the Policy and Resources Committee have at the very least expected these officers to be doing, to making sure that as we look forward, we, look, we can look forward with confidence that we'll have the ability to do the very best we can with whatever money that we can move about here and there. And if we have to use some that has been stuck in those in those reserves for quite a long time, it's because we know they will need to come to the fore at some time. 
and hopefully things will get much better. We will be good stewards of uh, of this prudence that uh, we are putting to all of Wales and that's being recognised and we'll be able to come through it at the end. Whoever's in these our positions by the time that's uh, able to do, it's what we expect our officers to be doing. Thanks and congratulations to you all. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Are there any further questions at all? No, in that case, the, the recommendation is on page 71 of the PACs. And members of the scrutiny committee are asked to note the content, uh, the content of the report, which we have done. Chair, I, I think Councillor Gordon wants to come in. Oh, I, he's not. I can't see anything flashing up. <coughs> Sorry, Chair, but my hands un, that function do not appear to be on my uh, toolbar here. So okay. I, I just want to back up what Leonard said about um, the play shaping. Over the next 18 months in the short term, we've got some very, very exciting and ambitious plans. And certainly in the long term as, uh, as well over the next five to six years. Uh, as Steve rightly said, we've got 24 million set aside, which will go on to around 30 million. I think all members will be excited with it, as I say, with the ambitious plans. We will be publishing these plans in the not too distant future. And as I said, they are very exciting. Thank you, Councillor Gordon, for that. OK, can, can we just um, the recommendations on 71? Members of the scrutiny committee are asked to note the content of the report, which we've done. That brings us to the end of the agenda. Can I thank all members for their participation, all uh, councillors and, and officers? Um, Happy New Year to you all yet again, and onwards and upwards for 2021.